Primary impingement over 35, again, uh, many patients will come in and they'll say, don't tell me it's my age. I'm sorry it is. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. We, we, as we get older, once you pass roughly age 25, you basically start to fibrose. I mean, you fibrose and you degenerate. I mean, you're fibrosing as you sit there right now, okay? <laughs> We're all fibrosing, okay? It's a, it's a nasty thing, and that's why you have active release techniques, okay? Um, I didn't get paid to say that. Okay. Uh, premature in the athletic population, okay? So you have somebody who's, who's very athletic from a very early age. What happens in athletics is we don't exercise for health, okay? We exercise to see how far we can push the human body. That's where the problem lies. So we have to accept the consequence of that. People who take a very healthy approach to exercise do very well and they have very little breakdown. But when you exercise to see how far I can go, how fast can I throw, how fast can I run, how much can I lift, you're pushing yourself to the limit. And when you push yourself to the limit, you're gonna break down, okay? Last lecture just talked about that. We talked about the nutrition of having muscles break down. That's what happens when, when you exercise to your excess, okay? so. You may see premature degeneration in somebody who's 28. Well, they're not over 35. That's what I mean. You have to keep your eyes open for some of this stuff. Primary impingement is basically mechanical compromise. Um, DJD, the AC joint, is very, very common in the weight training population, population because the AC joint is the weak link in the shoulder. It's a weak stabilizing link. It's not strong at all. The capsule is not strong. The ligaments are not strong. There's a lot of pivot that goes on there and a lot of stress, especially when you do chronic adduction maneuvers, just like in a bench press. Okay? When you're doing that forced adduction type maneuver, it compresses the AC joint and it forces it to break down. Uh, cuff atrophy. Rotator cuff muscles will atrophy, even somebody who, who's trained. They will become relatively weak to the strength of the prime mover because the prime mover is doing all the work, so the rotator cuff says, oh, vacation time. Where's my lounge chair and my drink with the umbrella in it? Okay, I'm out of here. Okay, the prime movers are, do, are the blue collar guys. They're doing all the work, okay? Uh, scapular weakness, again, poor posture. You see these patients, they come in, they have forward head carriage, rounded shoulders. They're setting themselves up. If their scapula is not stable, and then it's not sitting back in a retracted position, that changes the face of the glenoid cavity. And when you move the glenoid cavity anteriorly, it sets you up for instability. And it puts the rotator cuff muscles at a disadvantage. They don't have that mechanical advantage anymore when the scapula was positioned properly. That's a big issue.